Hey guys, there's Optech here, and today we're going to be going over something a little bit different, a little bit off topic to what we normally cover, but kind of on topic nevertheless. So a while back in August 3rd, 2015, this is only a couple months ago really, so I don't know why I said 2015, but anyway, on August 3rd, I was in Colorado, just, you know, hanging out with my older brother, and just, you know, enjoying Colorado basically. So I woke up that morning and I was laying down and I looked at my phone and I saw that there was this new video by NBC's Rawson Reports. And normally I watch these videos because I kind of like them. They're interesting and uh, just kind of cool. And they're usually pretty good. Um, so I watched this one and it was on airsoft guns. Well, particularly toy guns, which can include airsoft guns because don't, let's just face it guys, we play with some really fancy toys. So um, anyway, watched the video and I couldn't disagree more with it. And so we're going to talk about it today. So, in this Rawson Reports, he's going over why, or, well, the whole story of why New York City has outlawed the selling by Walmart, Kmart, and Amazon of selling realistic-looking toy guns within the city district. And by realistic-looking toy guns, I mean ones that are colored black, tan, and basic military colors. And so they want their guns to be neon colored. That's the story. And Rawson is going over it, and he's also talking about why it's unsafe for, you know, supposedly unsafe for kids and people in general to own realistic looking fake firearms. So there are three basic parts to this Rawson Reports and it's not really a long video so I'm going to have you guys watch it right now. It's only like four minutes or so so bear with me, watch it. You might find it interesting, you may not, and we're going to talk about it. So here it is. We are back now, 742, with the Rawson Reports exclusive this morning. The new crackdown on toy guns that officials look say look far too real, and it puts lives in danger. Today, National Investigative Correspondent Jeff Rawson's got this story. Jeff, good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning to you. Police tell me they see kids with these toy guns all the time, but in the heat of the moment, or even the darkness of night, cops cannot tell it's a toy. It looks like a real gun, as you can see, and they're easy to get, sold at the country's biggest retailers. But this morning, officials here in New York are are taking action, punishing some of those retailers and banning these toy guns that look real. If you're thinking, look, they're just toys, what's the big deal? Check this out. Hey, what's going on? I'm face to face with police. Drop the weapon! Is my gun real or just a toy? Let me see your head. In this demo, they only have a second to decide. What would you have done just now? Shot you. you I, shot actually, I actually pulled the trigger. Police say toy guns like this, confused for real guns on the streets, even used in real crimes to scare victims. We've had 63 people shot in New York because law enforcement officers thought the toy gun was a real gun. Eight fatalities. That's not acceptable. That shouldn't be acceptable to anyone. So today, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman reaching a landmark settlement with some of the country's biggest retailers, including Kmart, Walmart.com, and Amazon, fining them for selling toy guns that look real and getting them to agree to stop selling them statewide. This is one of the toy guns that you've been talking about, and it does look like a real gun from here. It has a, an orange point on the end, so this meets the federal standard, but this would be illegal in New York. What we do in New York City is we require that the entire gun be brightly colored. So what it look like? This is an example of a gun that under our agreements with these companies you could sell in New York. No one is going to hand over their wallet because they're getting held up with this, and no police officer is ever going to mistake this for a real gun and shoot someone in a tragic instant. But even with this new settlement, we were still able to go online and buy the real-looking toy guns, getting them shipped to other states, including Michigan, Arizona, and New Jersey, where it's still legal. So how dangerous can these toys be? We set up a bold experiment with the Rochester police, bringing out officers one at a time. We don't tell them why they're here or what's about to happen. Just to react, they're using training guns, so I stay safe. Just so you know what's about to happen, I'm holding one of those toy guns in my hand right now, and we know it's a toy gun because it has this orange cap on it. I'm going to stick it in my belt and turn around. Then I'm going to pull out the toy gun and point it at them only for about a second. That's all it takes for an officer to have to make a split-second decision. Will they shoot? How will they react? We're about to see. How you doing, sir? Sir, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Drop the gun. Drop the gun. Was that a real gun or a toy gun? I believe it was a real gun. Let me show you. Take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Toy gun. At a glance in the waistband from the distance, could not tell. He would have shot me. Yes, sir. In fact, one after the other. Hey, what's going on? Hey, let me see your hands. Let me see your head. Shoots me, thinking my toy gun is real. I didn't even see the red until actually when I actually was squeezing the trigger, so it was too late. 
And watch what happens with this officer. I don't point the toy gun, I just wave it. Drop the weapon! Drop the weapon! It still ends with shots fired. Would you have shot me just then? Yes. Did you know this was a toy gun? No, doesn't look like from where I was. Couldn't tell at all? Couldn't tell at all. How dangerous is that? Very dangerous. That's why they shouldn't be out there. We reached out to all of the retailers. Amazon didn't get back to us. Kmart and Walmart telling NBC News they're glad they resolved this issue with the Attorney General of New York, but will continue selling those toy guns in other states where they are still legal. That means these toy guns with the orange-looking tips are still on the market right now. And one other thing the officers point out, it comes with the orange tip, but a lot of people, look how easy it is to take off on a lot of the uh, guns. So people are walking around just like this, and now it looks completely real. But you can't, yeah. well, you can't tell it's plastic until no. you right, right, until right, until right on it. The whole thing should be painted fluorescent. Yeah, that's what they want yeah. in New York. Those, yeah. That's the New York City standard. They want that everywhere. That makes sense. Well, yeah. makes totally. Real eye-opener. Jeff, thank Thanks, you guys. so much. All right, so there's the video. Like I said, there's really three basic parts to it, and of course you can you know d divide it up to the beginning, the middle, and the end, but you can divide it into more describable terms than that. The first part is where he sits down with Eric Schneiderman, the Attorney General of New York, and discusses the issue. And then the second part is when he does an experiment, and the third part is his conclusion. And so throughout the video, he cites a bunch of like, you know, little, not even really statistics, but just things that happen. And he's like, well, kids get shot with this and stuff, and you know, they get shot when they have these fake toy guns that look real and all this stuff. And so he's you know, saying much stuff, but he's not citing any of his information. So first off, he really needs to cite some information. Though, you know, I'm not a big fan of citing your information because information is everywhere. But for a video like this, he really needs to back up his sources and say, according to this, this happened. So he does need to say that, and that's one first flaw with this. But really, that's kind of a nitpicky flaw. The biggest flaw, or one of the first biggest flaws in this video, is when he sits down with Eric Schneiderman, the New York Attorney General, and actually discusses the issue. And the issue, according to the Attorney General, is the fact that these toys look real, and they're getting people killed, because when a kid walking around the streets has this real, realistic looking gun, a police officer on patrol can see him and say, okay, this kid has a gun, I'm going to get out and defuse the situation because he shouldn't have a gun. And then the kid won't put it down because he doesn't understand what's going on, and so the police officer ends up shooting the kid. And so that's not good. We don't want that in our society. But the solution, according to the Attorney General, is to just outlaw guns that look real, or outlaw toy guns that look real. And so that's the solution, according to him. However, the problem with the solution is that it revolves around the fact that you're anticipating that criminals and people that want to do bad are going to obey the law. And that's just never something you can rely upon. It's just by definition and by logic, you can't rely upon that. So say I were to take this gun right here, my uh, trusty ICS M16, and I ran into a department store with this and I tried to hold it up. I would probably be relatively successful. Um, maybe not here in West Virginia because a lot of people open carry and concealed carry. But still, I might be pretty successful. I'd be pretty stupid because it's an airsoft gun, but it looks rather real and I could probably get away with it. Well you know, get out of the department store with money, maybe I might not get away with the crime, but I might be able to get away with it unscathed. So, <clears throat> his solution was to make it illegal for these kind of guns to exist in New York City, so that it has to be neon colored. So when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's a fake gun, because real guns are not painted neon colors. Fair assessment. That's assuming, though, that every single person in New York City that owns one of these guns is going to do that. That's assuming that criminals aren't going to do it, too. And so if a criminal wanted to, you know, be able to smuggle firearms more easily or disguise his realistic looking firearm as a fake firearm, he could easily just paint it the neon colors and therefore it looks like a fake gun. And the attorney general is saying that if we see these guns that are neon colored, police officers won't shoot kids or police officers won't shoot people. They'll just defuse the situation more easily. But if the gun that is actually a real gun is a neon color, and you can't tell it apart from the toy gun without actually handling it yourself, then you've made a more dangerous situation because you can't distinguish the two more easily. And so there's no point in that, and it makes the situation harder and more dangerous, and it just punishes good people like, well, good people like me. Um, so we can't own stuff like that then. I mean, the law-abiding citizens get punished over the criminals here, basically. And so it just makes it easier for criminals to pursue, pursue crime and all this other stuff than it is for the citizens to just enjoy their basic rights, which, as silly as it sounds, you do have a right to own a firearm and paint it whatever color you want, really. So, yeah, that's the first flaw, so let's move on. Alright, so the second flaw is the flaw in the experiment. Um, 
it's always cool to have experiments. Rossin Reports always does a, well, not always, um, usually does a pretty good job when it comes down to experimenting and showing proof of what they're talking about and, and showing real world scenarios. And the problem with this real world scenario, a real world scenario, is that the bad result is death. So it's harder to test. And so they have to have some safety things in it. And so, of course, that's going to invalidate the experiment quite a bit, though. And so, during this experiment, they brought out, they had Rawson, you know, Jeff Rawson, right outside a police station, I think Rochester, New York. And so they had him right outside with a fake gun, right in his, like, you know, between his, the front of his pants and his, his uh, abdomen, right where the gangster has his gun normally. And so, he had his gun there, and they had three police officers. They gave each of them, you know, fake firearms, the training firearms that they use when they're, you know, going through the police academy. They told them to go outside and react how you would normally react. They had cameras on them, and so, yeah, basically what they did with all this is they invalidated the experiment because the police officers, the variable that they're testing here, knows what's going on, so of course they're going to react the way they're supposed to react, which is the way Jeff Rawson set the experiment up. So, in all honesty, that experiment is very invalid. Maybe, sure, a police officer would have shot all three times that he was introduced in that situation, but the fact of the, how you went about doing the experiment really invalidates its legitimacy. So a better way of doing this, and granted a more dangerous way and a little bit more you know, untrustworthy way of doing this, would have been giving the police officers their guns, putting blanks into the magazines, not telling the police officers, and then sending them out on regular patrol to encounter an exact situation, and then seeing how it results in. Sure, a fair bit more dangerous, and sure, a fair bit just way different. But in order to make a proper experiment on this, you're going to have to test humans, the police officers, with raw behavior. And so you can't do that when you tell them everything that's going on. I mean, when you do a social experiment, you don't tell them you're doing a social experiment. So plain and simple, this experiment is very invalid because it just doesn't test anything. It just gets us right where we're back to. And so, yeah, not a very good experiment, very invalid and not legitimate at all and can no way support the argument in the video. The third part is obviously the ending and sort of the conclusion to the video. In the end, he shows him taking a fake gun and easily taking the federal regulated orange tip off the front of it. So anyway, I just want to say that that is not very easy to do. So this orange tip right here, it's, it's not coming off. I can't just take it off with my hand. Yep, not coming off. Hold on, I'm going to get a knife. So I got a knife here even. It's not coming off. No, oh, came off, finally. Okay, still got a little bit on there, so I can get all of it off. Yep, all right, so there goes the orange tip, finally. Took a knife. So at the very end of the video, right when he takes off the orange tip with so much ease, um, everybody's going around the little reporter's table and saying like, you know, yeah, this, this should really be illegal or, you know, yeah, you know, it should really be a law that these guns should be painted fluorescent colors because it's just so much better for society. And I'm just sitting there thinking, like, you're so narrow-minded. You're not treating the real issue. You're putting a band-aid on a broken arm is basically what you're doing. You know, trying to stop a bullet wound with, like, a band-aid or putting a tourniquet on, you know, on the broken finger. Like, you just don't do that much excessive, you know, you don't have that much, that excessive of a response, basically. And so... I believe the real issue here, and I'm going to get a little political with my political opinion, so um, anyway, I believe the real issue here is twofold. I think, number one, it's not very smart to be out in public where you can be seen very easily by, popul by the populace, the general populace that is, you know, rightfully very scared of, you know, gunfights and other things that will be occurring recently, like just, you know, mass shootings happen quite often. It's it's not a good scenario. And so, of course, people are going to get a little frightened when they see kids or people running around with realistic looking guns. They're probably going to call the police. The police are going to show up and somebody might get hurt or even worse, die. So, it's not too smart to be out where you can be seen with these realistic looking guns. So, the first solution would probably be, you know, just to go somewhere private. More private than just your backyard. More private than just your front yard. You know, that kind of stuff. It's smarter. Um, the second one is... I believe that the government should not be so uptight with stuff like this. Granted, like I said in the first one, it's not smart to do this kind of stuff, but that's 
not you, you're not you don't have to be smart is the idea like what I'm trying to say is the government like when when you're out in your backyard with you know a realistic looking firearm like say I were to take this you know M16 right here out to my backyard and be you know shooting pop cans um, I'm in my backyard my property and my neighbor sees me over my fence you know they could the, my next door neighbor could do that easily see me over my fence and you know call the police because they're terrified that I have a realistic looking firearm now granted they would not do this because I've actually talked to them about it I've actually went to these neighbors and told them this is what I do don't be scared if you see something like this you know if you see me you know doing something you don't think I should be doing bring it to me not the police we'll have a friendly discussion with it and figure it out but just say for you know a scenario's sake that somebody sees me doing this and they get scared and call the police well number one I'm in my property. I've not hurt anyone yet. You don't have, and, and somebody may use the argument, well, they're not feeling safe. You don't have a constitutional right to feel safe. You have a constitutional right to pursue happiness, which you can pursue, pursue your own safety. Not call the government and ask them to arrest somebody that makes you feel unsafe. So, my backyard, not your backyard. I am not hurting anybody. Nobody's threatened. Nobody's, like I said, been hurt. Nobody's been shot at. Everything's fine. Nobody's been hurt. Nothing is wrong has happened. So, we can proceed from there. The police don't need to get involved, the police don't need to come and arrest me, the police don't need to come and take away my realistic looking firearm because I haven't hurt anybody. So, plain and simple. That's the twofold issue, I think, is that people get scared and it's, it's right, it's fair to be scared. It's just, the police, when they get there, shouldn't be so uptight and shouldn't want to shoot you or something like that or steal your firearm, you know, your realistic firearm, because it scares the general populace. And I'm aware that police have to respond to every incident. They have to be there for every incident. They have to take every call very seriously. And so, but when they get there, they can handle it so much better. And it's just, it's really silly. They, they really just don't need to be so uptight with certain things. And I know there's a lot of mass shootings recently. And I know that's very important to protect people. But, you know, a six-year-old with a, you know, fake gun running around in his front yard, not even, you know, there's no shots fired, no danger has been presented, and you call the cops and the kid gets shot? Like, that's not necessary. And it's even less necessary, like, it's just the same thing for me in my backyard shooting off this gun. It doesn't make a loud bang, it doesn't sound like a real gun. Sure, it looks like one, but it is not a real gun. And you can tell that. And so, by just, just by the way it functions even, by the sound it makes, by the way it functions, the only way, the only thing that makes it look, look like a real gun is the way it looks. And so there's no point for me to die, for me to get arrested because I'm using this in my private property. So that's basically my solution to this is people need to be smarter and the government needs to be less, you know, they need to be smarter in the way they respond to it. Like I said, I'm aware people get scared. Now, I'm aware it's very important to, to call in things to the police that you see are very suspicious. But the police don't necessarily have business in your front yard or in your backyard and stuff like that. And they most certainly don't have business shooting you when you're in your backyard and they have no search warrant and anything like that. So that is my take on it. And I believe the solution is to tell your, you know, get the parents, to, you know, uh, just better teach kids to not run out in public with these guns and not run around with them. It's, it's smart, basically, to just stay inside with them or be on your private property, treat it very seriously to them and, you know, explain to the kids what's going on. And so there's a smart side to do it and there's also the government that needs to just be a little bit smarter in the way they respond to it. So it's a twofold problem, that is a twofold solution that both sides need to understand so that we have our rights, we're not being violated, yet the government can still protect us and respond properly. So that's really about all I got for this video, guys. I know it's a pretty different video compared to what I normally make, but I really felt like I should do it for two reasons. Number one, I felt like I could do a pretty good job. I, I feel like I'm a pretty objective person. I mean, I feel like I see things for what they are more than what I feel like they are. So I felt like I could do a pretty good job of making a response to the Rawson Reports video. And uh, secondly, because I just don't see anybody that does videos like this in the airsoft community. And maybe there are some people out there, maybe there aren't, I just haven't seen them. So, yeah, um, if you guys liked the video, tell me why. And if you didn't and you disliked it, tell me why, I want to know why. If you oppose my opinion, go for it. I want to I wanna hear what you got to say. I mean, I'm not opposed to uh, opposition at all. Not opposed to opposition, yeah. And so, if you thought I missed something, you know, tell me below and we'll discuss it. I'd love to know what I missed in this video, so maybe I can go back and make a new one. I don't know. So, anyway, I will see you guys in the next video, whatever the heck I do. Until then, stay tuned, you techs.